Hello friends, my name is Nikhil and I welcome you to my channel. If you are in the business of making games, you know how difficult it is to get discovery for your game. I'm currently actually writing an entire book on how to market your games and make money through them, which will be coming out next month. Uh, but recently I got a comment on my podcast from some guy named Rajesh asking me to provide some insights on ASO. I have actually covered this uh, topic in great detail in my book. However, I'd be more than happy to share a summary of this topic here so it can help you to get started with this. We will be talking about how to improve your game's ranking based on title, description and screenshots for your game. Alright, so before I tell you about what is a good ASO strategy, let us first understand what ASO is exactly. In a world where literally thousands of apps and games get uploaded on Google Play Store every single day, you have to be extremely competitive in order to make your game stand out. App Store optimization or more popularly known as ASO is what helps you stand out from the crowd of apps and games being uploaded to the store. ASO for games is what search engine optimization SEO is for websites. So the general principles for ASO are very much similar to SEO but with a slight twist. Let's understand why is it so important to get this part right for your game. So the user's decision to download your game is a three step process. First one is to search for your game, second is to discover your game, and third is finally to download your game. Each of these steps is crucial and your game needs to satisfy all these three points uh, for the user to download your game. This entire process can be termed as user acquisition. Companies spend millions of dollars on acquiring users to their games. To be able to win the battle of discovery, you got to be prepared with the knowledge of how to get your game in front of your target audience, which brings us to the next point. You have to know your audience, all right? In order to acquire your users, you first need to understand who exactly your audience is. All right, so you have made a casual game and you think that the target audience for your game can be literally anyone in the world. That is not true in reality though. You need to be able to define your audience properly. You need to have a knowledge of their age, gender, interests and also the type of games that they are playing. So you also need to be aware of your competition in that sense. Here are a few questions to ask yourself to know of your target audience. All right. So you can note these questions down. So the questions are as follows. What is the gender of my target? What is the gender of my target audience? What is the age group of my target audience? Where does my target audience live? What games does my target audience play? What genre is my game? Uh, what does my target audience do? Are they school students, college students, uh, working somewhere, etc.? Uh, what devices do your target audience have? Do they have a low-end phone? Do they have a high-end phone, uh, mid-end phone, whatever? ASO generally involves a lot of factors such as taking into consideration your game's visuals, title, description, keywords, and some more things. Let us dive into each of these things starting with your game's title and description. So your game's title and description plays a huge role in getting discovered by users. It is true that most of your users won't even bother reading your description in the first place, uh, but that does not make it any less important. In fact, it makes it even more important to have a proper description, primarily because you need to understand how to pick the right keywords in your description, and based on these keywords, uh, your games get searched. Selecting keywords itself is an extremely important task in order for your description to be relevant and I will be covering more on this in another video. For now, let's focus on the title. Uh, let's consider your game's name is Subway Train Surfer, alright? In order for your game to get downloaded by users, you need to be in the top search results for your game's keywords. Let's consider uh, that your target keyword for your game is Subway, alright? So you have the keyword in your title. That's a good thing. Coming to the next part is that the general rule is that your keyword should get repeated in your description at least three times and it should exist in the title you choose. This is called as the keyword density, which means the number of times your keyword gets repeated in excess of three. And so generally the percentage of your keywords existence in your description should be around one to three percent. So if your description is of around 100 words, then your keyword should not get repeated more than three times. Or in many cases, this might be considered as keyword stuffing, which is excess use of keywords. The title of your game is crucial for your game's discovery primarily because you can say it is almost as important as the game's icon. A combination of a powerful title and a nice icon is a short shot formula for getting downloads. Then we come to something called as the short description. Your game's short description allows you to write up to 80 characters in it. And this gets displayed just below the number of downloads for your game on Google Play Store. Uh, make it a practice to include your game's keywords in this. Then we have the most crucial aspect of your game's discovery, which is the long description. As of this recording, uh, you have been given up to 5,000 characters to write in your game's description. 
utilize to its maximum capacity add in your keywords and there are a few guidelines to follow here though as per google play's guidelines uh, you are prohibited from writing user based reviews which means that whatever rating your users give if they have five star rating given to you or something like that you cannot put that in your game's description however you are free to use html elements in your description html tags like bold italics underline ahref are allowed in your game's description if you're not sure what HTML tags are, then consult someone who is an HTML developer. They will surely help you out with the formatting part. Then to give your game an extra edge, uh, you can also use localized description. Localization means simply convert your game's description into multiple languages. For example, if your target country is Spain, then it would definitely dramatically help you if you wrote your game's uh, title and description in Spanish. This will help you in two ways. First one is people who speak that language and use it to search will find your game and are more likely to download your game. The second part is that your game will also rank for a wide array of keywords in various languages. You can definitely use Google Translate to localize your game since people don't read the description but it is a very bad practice primarily because Google Translate is not that accurate. So I would recommend that you hire someone to provide this service for you because if you don't speak that particular language then chances are high to make a mistake and the real meaning of a statement might get lost in translation. Then we come to a very important part of visuals. In order to acquire your users you need to attract them to your game first the icon is your entry point all right the icon of your game is where your users decide first whether or not they would be interested in your game you need to make sure your icon is as attractive as possible and at the same time gives a general idea about what your gameplay is going to be a good idea to decide if your icon is appealing or not is simply by doing an a b test with a small group of people create a few icons of your game and show them to as many people as possible and get their feedback for your icons and then finalize the one that gets most number of votes. Simple. There are multiple Facebook groups dedicated to get feedback from game developer community as well. A uh, good thing about our industry is that our community is extremely friendly and very helpful. You can always expect a good amount of constructive feedback from people if you approve them. Now there is also something called as a featured image. It is a 1024 by 500 dimension image which is which appears on the top of your game's listing once user clicks on your game's icon so if you're launching your game on apple's app store then this part is not necessary but google has made this mandatory so let's understand what this featured image is exactly as soon as users open your game's listing after clicking on your game icon the first thing they notice is the featured image after your icon this is the most important part of your game or, and then moving ahead, your users have made it past your game's attractive looking icon, have seen your featured image and now are excited to see what the game is going to offer. What are they going to do next? They will scroll down and check your game screenshots, right? Yes, they would not even read the game's description as we saw earlier. There's one relief for you here that Google Play does not have any strict resolution restrictions for your screenshots to be of any particular fixed dimensions. Uh, so you can do two things over here. One, you can actually use actual screenshots of your game or second, you can create customized graphics for your screenshots. Try to keep the image file size as small as possible so that it loads quickly on the user's phone. But here's the biggest fight now. All of your efforts will go fail if the user does not like your game screenshot. You can consider this as one of the final steps for your user to make a decision to download your game or not or they'll just press the back button and find some other game. Your screenshots have to be really really good. Your screenshots can either be landscape or portrait or they can be both and you can upload up to eight screenshots but I would suggest that you use only three screenshots and create a sort of an intrigue factor to them because the less you show the more interesting your game can be. If your game supports tablet resolution then upload screenshots for tablets as well. So these are just some basics of ASO and I have covered these in great detail in my book. So if you are interested in getting my book uh, be sure to be a part of my email subscribers list. I have left the link in the description. You can directly go to www.nikmlnkr.com slash b-o-o-k-s that is nikmlnkr.com slash books. You can find the link to my email subscribers list over there. So with this I will end it here. Do check out my other videos on my YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel if you are finding me here for the first time. Uh, I am active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all other social medias. My username everywhere is nikmlnkr. Uh, I hope you liked my two cents about ASO. I look forward to see you in the next video. This is Nikhil signing off. Nasklatano.